Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Ronald W. Satz, founder and chair of the International Society of Unified Science and president of TransPower Corporation, a commercial and custom software manufacturing and certified systems engineering company. I work as a theoretical physicist and as a systems and mechanical engineer. Today's with most of my weekly screencasts, we'll be discussing the reciprocal system. I'm continuing uh, to uh, go over the reciprocal system macrocosmos database. We finished all the layouts except for the graphing. So in past videos I've already covered the universe as a whole, galaxy clusters and groups, galaxies, star clusters, stars, planets, moons, minor bodies, nebulae, gas and dust, events and voids. So now we're going to go over here to general progression and gravitation graph, so I'll just click here. <clears throat> now this is for um, galaxy clusters. Now the Virgo clusters actually comprised of various galaxy groups, so the equations really don't apply to the Virgo cluster, but um, I mean you can play around with that and see for yourself. But if I click here, specify the number, I'll get to a local group. So to get accurate results, I just want to point out that for the uh, gravitation versus progression uh, graphs, you need to do this for galaxy groups. So the Milky Way is part of the local group, so that's what we'll use here. So let's just quickly look at the different possibilities here now. You can see uh, the name of the, of the galaxy cluster's local group, the mass is here, uh, and grams, gravitational limits first and second, megaparsecs, and then the ordinates. And of course the data is here um, as determined by the program. Normally you'll just click on set default values. <clears throat> so if I, if I look here, let's go, let's look at the first one. We'll go through all these quickly. Zero point speed kilometers per second is a function of mass. Um, and we can plot this uh, versus mass and solar mass units, distances in terms of gravitational distance and light years distance in megaparsecs. So I'm going to let's so set the default values and then generate the graph data and then generate the graph. So here's the graph. So this is the zero point speed. That's the location at which um, the, the uh, inward and out, outward motions is equal. Uh, okay, so, um, and this is in kilometers per second. So the mass is, we're treating this to be, um, well, I have it, 2.3 to the 12, so, you know, right around here. So that's about what it is, 100 kilometers per second out, 100 kilometers per second coming in. All right, so let's go to the next one. Um, mass and solar units set default values um, generate the graph data generate the graph oh, I'm sorry what I got what I have to do it's really the same thing that's right so what we got to do is uh, So let's just go to the next one. First gravitational moment is a function of mass. And of course it makes sense to go there. Set defaults, same thing. Okay. So here's the first gravitational limit. This is in light years. And again, you can see kind of what that looks like. Um, the rest of these really doesn't, you know, you don't really need that. So let's do first gravitational limit in megaparsecs as a function of mass. So there's the mass, and so um, set default values, generate the graph data. So now we have some megaparsecs, which is probably a better unit to use for uh, for this. First gravitational limit as a function of mass, you know, right about here. 25 megaparsecs for the local group. 
Right, that's good enough since second gravitational is a function of mass. Again, set default values to generate that. So here's the second gravitational limit. You can see how much bigger this is. Not quite two times ten, ten to the tenth. Um, yeah, we want to stick with mass and solar mass. That's going to be the most common abscissa. And then we'll go second gravitational limit in terms of megaparsecs. We'll keep that the same. Set default values. Generate the data. Generate the graphs. Okay, so this is in megaparsecs. It's just a, it's a better unit to use. So this is roughly you know, 6,000 megaparsecs. Okay, so let's go to the next one. That's speed of mass inside of first gravitational limit. That's speed of mass. Okay. And I guess, uh, yeah. Actually, let's go just let's see what this does. Graph data. Graph. Okay. So this is the net speed of the mass within the first gravitational limit uh, in terms of the first gravitational limit x over g zero. Okay. So obviously within the first gravitational limit it's going to be a negative velocity coming in. Okay, that's why these numbers are negative here. And, uh, okay, let's just go to the next one. The speed of mass outside the first gravitational limit. Uh, I guess, let's see, what would be the best one to use? Actually, we need to do something different here. So let's go. Let's speed. Okay. So obviously, it's going to be. It's almost a linear increase, obviously, outside the first gravitational limit. So you, you have to make sure that the system makes sense relative to the ordinary. The Hubble constant is a function of mass. So we have to go back to mass solar, mass units here. Click on default values, generate the graph data, generate the graph. Okay, Hubble constant. And you can see it goes down with the size of uh, the galaxy group. Very interesting. You won't find this in any other, other theory, that's for sure. And as a function of distance, so we're going to change this distance to megaparsecs. Set default values, generate the graph. Okay. So this is the Hubble constant as a function of distance <coughs> in megaparsecs. So it increases and then it levels off. Okay, wow, we covered a lot today. Uh, so let's just, you know, I'll close in a moment, but you know, you, you can do all this for the other, you know, for all the other um, clusters and galaxies. But frankly, it really only makes it makes the most sense just to do it for uh, the local group. All right, all right. So while well, that does it for today, uh, please study the reciprocal system and prove it for yourself. For the simplest possible treatment of the theory, please obtain my work in Mysterious Universe, first published in 1971, still in print, sold by Amazon.com and TranspowerCorp.com. And uh, provides all the concepts, many drawings, 
very little math, so if you're worried about the math, don't worry about it. But if you do want all the math, please obtain my Magnum Opus, which was published in 2017, which has uh, you know my 50 years' work, essentially, uh, in a reciprocal system. 7 or 11 pages in the PDF, and 711 slides in the PowerPoint file. Has all the equations, thousands and thousands of equations. Numerous diagrams, tables, figures, you name it, it's in there. Plus, we provide free support for any questions you have about the reciprocal system. Of course, if you want us to do any physical science work for you, that's at a regular consulting charge. But as far as the support for the work is, is free, any corrections or changes are also free, of course. In addition to that, we have these two database modules. I've already explained what we have here in the Macrocosmos database. Uh, the Microcosmos database module has all the properties of matter in the Microcosmos. So for solid-state matter, this module has calculations for the atomic distance, valence, specific heat, energy, and entropy, thermal expansion, compressibility, electrical and magnetic properties, isotopes, and spectra. Yes, spectra. We don't have jumping electrons in the reciprocal system. We have changes in the thermal motion and ionization level of atoms. That's what really causes spectra. We have liquid vapor gas matter properties, volume and density, specific heat, energy and entropy, viscosity and surface tension, and electrical and thermal conductivity. We also cover cosmic elements, subatomic particles, and that includes material and cosmic subatomic particles. Uh, the cosmic particles are what conventional physics call the mesons. The cosmic elements have the inverse mass to their corresponding material elements, or ordinary elements. That's why they have a mass normally in the range of deuterium all the way down to uh, you know, just small molecules of the electron mass, charged electron mass. And of course you have photon properties. This module also has a fine graphics uh, program as well. Now my mentor, Doobie Larson, was also a theoretical economist as well as a theoretical uh, physicist. And I've made his economics work fully computational, just as I've made his physical science work fully computational. So optimal economist implementation of Larsonian econophysics includes microeconomics of individuals, businesses, and business sectors, and macroeconomics of regions and whole countries. Completely supersedes the nonsense known as Keynesian economics. Incidentally, the Federal Reserve should not be setting interest rates. The free market should. The Federal Reserve should just be increasing or reducing the money supply, M0, by means of buying or selling bonds to the public, not doing all this stuff with the banks. If, the reason why we haven't had inflation over the past 10 years is that the, the enormous amount of money supply created by the Federal Reserve has been stuck in banks. It's never got out to the purchasing power stream of the public. Uh, but that's where it should go if we want to increase or uh, reduce the money supply in, in effect. So that software program is also available from Amazon.com or TransPowerCorp.com. All right, so please study the reciprocal system and prove it for yourself. And thanks for your attention.